Buckle up, everyone. You are strapped in and ready for the Insurance Hour with me, your host, Carl Sussman. Informing, educating, and entertaining Californians one policy at a time. This is Insurance Hour. Hello, hello, everyone. How are you? This is Carl Sussman, and you are tuned into Insurance Hour. How the heck are you doing today? Hopefully, you are doing well. We have got a full show today, lots of stuff to talk about, but let me give you all the housekeeping stuff. Of course, you can catch us on all the great radio stations, also as a podcast on Apple Podcasts, on iHeartMedia. You can catch the video portion on YouTube and other great streaming platforms as well. Looking for questions from you always, and you can email us at questions at insurancehour.com. You can also send your questions in to, I'm sorry, I just said two questions at insurancehour.com, or you can call in anytime at 559-656-0317. If you get through right away and we happen to be uh, not too busy, then I'll take your call right away. I'll pause what I'm doing because I would much rather talk to you and get your questions so I can answer them. If not, and you do get voicemail, please do leave a message and let me know if you're all right having your question played on the air, and I will address the question and go over it later. With that said, let's dive right in. It appears that uh, we've got some news having to do with some insurance legislation that's going down. Now, Governor Newsom has recently proposed a trailer bill to be attached to the California budget. Now, for those of you who don't know, like me, what a trailer bill is, it has nothing to do with trailers, which I actually thought comically that it did. A trailer bill is something that is put on top of the existing legislation that's put on top of the budget, you might say, on the budget bill. And it has potentially nothing to do with the California budget. It's just trailing on. It's basically just attached at the end. And it can be a little bit controversial because it normally, again, since it has nothing to do with the budget, it might not have the same level of scrutiny that general legislation might have. And I want to talk about that today. I want to talk about what's in the bill. I want to talk about what the responses are from different people, different organizations, my take on it, all that other good stuff. So the first thing we need to keep in mind is that we're talking about the insurance industry in California, which right now is in in dramatic chaos. The the vast majority of insurance carriers are not offering coverage. A lot of carriers are non-renewing policies. It's, It's bad. So the governor had sent down an edict to the California Department of Insurance stating basically, hey, this is your job. Fix this. The Department of Insurance and Ricardo Lara came back with what's called the Sustainable Insurance Strategy, which is a list of different guidelines that are designed to update California regulations in the insurance industry to make them, I hate to say it, more current. We're working under regulations that have been basically untouched for 30 plus years. We obviously have a very different world than we did 30 years ago. We have different technology. We have different weather events. We have uh I hate to say it, we have actual computers that can do a heck of a lot more than they could 30 years ago. We have vehicles that are designed differently. We have homes that are built differently. We have a lot of things that have changed. However, the regulations have not. So the sustainable insurance strategy is designed to update the regulations that the insurance industry focuses on and the consumer protections that are in place in California. So what I want to do first is let me go over a high level what this bill, right, what this trailer bill has in it. And keep in mind that the trailer bill is simply one part of the sustainable insurance strategy that the insurance commissioner is putting forth. So the insurance commissioner's plan, the sustainable insurance strategy, is supposed to be implemented between now and the end of the year. It's about halfway, maybe a little more than halfway rolled out. It's not active yet, but the information has been rolled out. This first part, the governor in a recent budgetary conference basically stood up and said, look, we can't wait for December for all of these changes. We need to get these changes done like yesterday. Therefore, he's going to take the first part of the sustainable insurance strategy, put it in a trailer bill, and roll it out right away. It could, it literally could be in effect the day after signature. So what's in the trailer bill? Let's talk about it. The first thing is it is reaffirming 
existing regulations and existing laws that are on the books for insurance. And I'll read you part of it, and this is in the trailer bill, and it's reaffirming a, a major point in Proposition 103, and that states that no rate shall be approved if it is excessive, inadequate, unfairly discriminatory, or otherwise in violation. So the very first thing out the gate that the trailer bill is saying is we are not kowtowing to the industry. We are still going to maintain the protections that we have always had in place for consumers in California. The next thing says that insurers will be required to file a complete application with the Department of Insurance. Now, by complete application, that means all of the information that the Department of Insurance needs in order to look at their application. The way the regulations work currently in California, anytime an insurance company wants to make a change to an insurance policy, whether it be at a discount, raise a rate, offer a new product, whatever it might be, they have to submit the documentation to the Department of Insurance and the Department of Insurance has to approve it. There is nothing going on. There's not a penny we pay or a product that's available admitted in the state of California that the Department of Insurance has not approved. So the first part of the trailer bill says, hey, insurance industry, we need complete information right up front. And the way they're going to do that is by providing something of a, like a checklist to insurance companies of what information the department wants to have in order to decide whether the changes they're looking to make are going to be acceptable or not. Those are major protections for the consumers, obviously, for all of us, because it means an insurance company cannot just willy-nilly offer a product, change a price, change guidelines without having the insurance commissioner look at it and approve it. Remember, in California, the insurance commissioner is an elected position. So voters get to pick who represents their interests, put that person in the California Department of Insurance, and that person has to approve everything that goes through that might affect an insurance policy in the state of California. That's important, and I want you to remember that because a little bit later we're going to talk about some of the things that people are talking about with the trailer bill and the sustainable insurance strategy in general. So I want you to keep in mind that this is critical, that there is nothing in this bill that changes the consumer protections that force the Department of Insurance to review every line of every word of every document that the insurance carriers may be submitting to them in order to get their products to have changes made. So I want to get into more of the trailer bill, which is, which is of course, more of the sustainable insurance strategy. And we'll get back to that as soon as we come back. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, in just a few moments, the window to the magic podcast show will begin. My name is Patrick. My name is Calvin. I'm Mouseketeer Gray. My name is Paul, and I will be your guide through the wonderful world of Disney sound experiences. This show is a weekly trip into the world of the Disney theme parks and resorts. And this is the place where you get to use your ears to surround yourself with the magic. For your safety, please remain seated while listening to the Window to the Magic.com podcast. Maybe there's a name for this, something like Disnotic Obsession. Please visit windowtothemagic.com for more information, or you can find us on Apple Podcasts and in the iHeartMedia app. Hello, hello. We are back. Thank you so much for being here. This is Carl Sussman. You are tuned into Insurance Hour. Remember, questions can be sent to questions at insurancehour.com. You can also call at 559-656-0317. We're talking right now about Gavin Newsom's trailer bill and its impact on California insurance regulations. Before the break, I was pointing out the important fact that the guidelines in the trailer bill do not weaken anything of the any of the consumer protections that are in place from Proposition 103. The insurance industry simply has to go through the same process that it was going through before with these changes. Now, here's the first change. Currently, 
insurance applications can be submitted and the insurance department might send them back and say, I need more information. And there's a lot of back and forth that goes on. This back and forth can sometimes take months, can sometimes take years. Actually, somebody from the Department of Insurance recently said that the average time between when an insurance carrier first approaches the department for a change and when that change is implemented can be somewhere around 190 days. Mind you, that's 190 days from when they finally receive all of the information that they need. So the Department of Insurance is being told in this bill, hey, you have 60 days to review the information that the insurance company is submitting to you. Now, 60 days doesn't seem like a long time until you realize that 60 days is after they've received everything. 60 days. Now, the insurance industry is being provided a detailed list of what is required. So theoretically, the industry should be able to comply with this law, provide all of the information up front. It's to everybody's benefit, right? A complete application is always going to be processed faster than an incomplete application and begin. Now, if the Department of Insurance is not able to get through that process in 60 days, it can ask for a 30-day extension. Now we're up to 90 days, no problem. If the Department of Insurance still is unable to have the time or get through the process, they can ask for yet another 30-day extension. Now we're up to 120 days. After that 120-day period, the Department of Insurance is mandated to respond to the insurance carrier. This is where it gets important. What a lot of the talking heads out there are saying is that after that period of time, they have to rubber stamp everything. And that is a resounding, inaccurate statement. After the 120-day period, right, so we're assuming 60 days and we're assuming the Department of Insurance takes their other two, those other two 30-day extensions, they have to respond to the insurance carriers. They can respond, as they frequently do, and say, no. Or they can respond and they can say, no, but. They can do whatever they want. None of those actions change whatsoever. And it's important to understand that because, again, what you're going to be hearing and we're going to talk about it a little bit is people saying everything is being rushed and the insurance carriers can just file whatever they want and in 60 days they get to just use it. That's just factually inaccurate. It's just wrong. It's just not true. It's not what the bill says. To the contrary, if you really look back to Proposition 103, it gives a timeline that is supposed to be followed by the industry and that timeline is 180 days that's never happened and somehow we've survived so now we're actually tightening the regulations and we're making them more in line with what proposition 103 said and again we're strengthening the department of insurance ability to do what it does because we're giving them the power to do everything they were doing in a shorter period of time and we're mandating that the industry provide complete information before they even will consider looking at the application so keep that in mind consumer protections are higher timeline is shorter that's really a win-win for everybody because when timelines are shorter, what does that tend to do? It tends to mean that the changes that are being requested are going to make a little more sense. If they're trying to make a change to a product, come out with a new product, change a rate, add a discount, whatever it might be, they want to do it now. And the Department of Insurance will be able to have all of the information that they're looking for to make a decision as to whether that's okay or not. Now, it's not going to be an indefinite period of time for them to look at it. So moving forward, after the uh, governor put out the text for the trailer bill, there was a statement that came out from the Department of Insurance from Insurance Commissioner Ricardo Lara. And I'll read it to you here just so you're able to uh, understand where everybody's coming from. I'll be giving you lots of quotes today. He says, quote, I appreciate Governor Newsom's strong backing of my strategy and his continued commitment to make sure we have the support and resources we need to implement effective, lasting reform. The department's rate review is in the public's check on rates, making sure consumers do not pay more than they are required for coverage. This proposal strengthens my department's ability to hold all parties to a rate filing accountable, including insurance companies and interveners. We will continue to thoroughly review each and every rate application filed to make sure they are compliant with our laws and justified under Proposition 103 and that consumers are protected. Sound familiar? 
to safeguard the integrity of the insurance market composed of consumers, homeowners, and business owners, we must fix a system suffering from decades of deferral and delay. This measure is one of several parts of a comprehensive plan to enact long overdue regulatory reforms. The legislature can do its part to support my reforms by giving this proposal a fair and full consideration, including public input. By enacting this important part of the strategy in statute, the legislature could help us meet this urgency. So, as I previously said, this is part of a greater picture. This is part of strengthening consumer protections, and this is part of modernizing the regulations to 2024 to allow insurance carriers to work within the confines of California law and do it in a more brisk fashion so that changes that they want to make, changes that the industry needs can happen and not be sitting on the back burner or be deferred indefinitely. So what's wrong with this? Anything? Anything? Well, let's listen to what some people are saying. And I don't want to necessarily call anyone out by name, but I think you'll know who there is one consumer group that tends to be leading the charge and always being sort of the naysayer. And let me read you a quote from this. Uh, it says, Commissioner Laura cut a deal with the insurance industry, one that he says will get them selling more home insurance. But internal documents obtained under the Public Records Act show that this deal is a bait and switch on consumers and it will not get a single homeowner covered. Now, what's the initial thing you would say after hearing that? Oh, show me that document. Well, that document is strangely not available in the article where I pulled this quote from this particular consumer group. And I say consumer loosely. So we've got words here. We've got word salad talking about how it's a deal and it's bad and the documents show it. But we're not going to reference the documents. We're not going to give you a link to the documents. We're not going to quote the documents either. Does this sound like a reliable source to you? Think about it. Let's take a quick break and then we'll get back and we'll talk about this a little bit more and we'll see where to go next. In today's uncertain times, navigating the California insurance marketplace can feel like a journey through uncharted waters. That's where Sussman Insurance Agency steps in, guiding you with the wisdom of experience and the care of family. We at Sussman Insurance Agency understand the complexities of finding the right coverage in these challenging times. With decades of expertise and a heritage spanning two generations, we're more than just insurance agents. We are your trusted advisors, your navigators in the sea of insurance options. Treating our clients like family isn't just a phrase, it's our commitment. We listen, we understand, and we provide solutions tailored to your unique needs. Why? Because to us, you're a part of the Sussman family. Don't let the tides of uncertainty sway you. Anchor your trust in Sussman Insurance Agency. Call us today at 877-411-5200 or visit sussmaninsurance.com. Have specific questions? Drop us an email at sales at sussmaninsurance.com. At Sussman Insurance Agency, we're not just in the business of policies. We're in the business of peace of mind. Sussman Insurance Agency, navigating your insurance life together. Hello, hello, and welcome back. I'm Carl Sussman, and you are tuned into Insurance Hour. Remember, you can reach me anytime at 559-656-0317 or send your questions to questions at insurancehour.com. We are talking about a, I'm making air quotes, consumer group that is uh, having some issues with the trailer bill and the overall sustainable insurance strategy, I might say, that the Department of Insurance and the state governor is putting forward. Reading a little bit further on an article that this group mentioned, I'll read you exactly what it says, and let's try and read and look at this and see how accurate this actually is. It says, quote, The governor's plan, which is the trailer bill, invites insurance companies to set their own prices and will kill public participation in rate review. Well, that's just factually wrong. There's nothing in the trailer bill that tells them to set their own prices, and it, it will not kill participation in rate review. The bill actually reinforces the fact that, number one, the rates have to be looked at and approved by the insurance commissioner. Remember, the guy that we voted to put there to protect us. And number two, it's still, and it reaffirms the fact that the intervener process, which, by the way, side note, is anyone that wants to say, I'm not happy with this filing by the insurance company, that still exists. So the very first part of this is simply wrong. 
I, 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 it, it still kind of surprises me that people can put things out there that are just factually wrong, especially when they're so easy to fact check. But anyway, moving on, says it takes away the insurance commissioner's ability to make insurance companies justify their charges and turns the Department of Insurance into a rubber stamp for rate increases. Well, we just read the statement from the actual insurance commissioner, and he says it makes his position stronger. So who are we going to believe? The guy who's in charge and the guy who's basically required to do these things? And he's saying, this is going to give me more power? Or just some other group of people or some other entity or, again, air quotes, consumer group that just, I guess, thinks they know better than the person that this is actually affecting? It also says, quote, it guts the public intervener process and will cost insurance consumers billions in savings from future public rate challenges. Again, billions? Why? How? How can we possibly know what it's going to do? It's not changing the intervener process at all. It's strengthening it. Again, it's frustrating for me and at the same time puzzling that organizations that purport to be consumer-based and consumer-friendly will put out information that's just wrong. Again, just read the bill. This is almost the polar opposite of what it's doing. And if you're not sure, you don't want to read it, ask the guy who is going to be affected by this, and he's saying it's going to help him. Further on, it says, the bill contains no provisions for considering a lower rate or addressing objections raised by a public intervener. Well, it doesn't say that Monday begins with an M, Tuesday begins with a T. What does that have to do with anything? That's not what the bill is about. The bill is not talking about addressing lower rates. The bill is about expediting the existing laws that are in place. So, why are we talking about a topic that's not even part of this bill? I don't know. I would say, if anything, the whole overwhelming concept is we're trying to get more carriers to write business, which is going to, to increase competition. And we all know when there's competition, prices go down. So arguably, logically, this is a process that's going to lower rates. And again, when the company throws out numbers, it's going to cost us billions, where do you get that? How do you just randomly come up with these numbers and say them? It just It's so frustrating to me to see that this can happen because that gets into the public dialogue. Further on, it says, the right of consumers to monitor insurance companies' compliance with Proposition 103 is part of the 1988 reform initiative that requires insurance companies to open their books and prove their rates and premiums are reasonable before the insurance commissioner can approve them. Yes, that's true. And it still is. None of that changes. It's actually strengthened. You see what's going on here? We, we, have an, uh, we have a group that is literally trying to stay relevant by just saying stuff, either things that are literally inaccurate or stating the obvious or stating what is actually good. Confused. And finally, uh, in this particular quote that I pulled, says it requires the insurance companies to pay the fees and expenses of lawyers, actuaries, and other experts who represent consumers in such challenges. Well, this is true. This is unchanged as well. What this is saying is if somebody decides to dispute an intervener, and let's face it, we're talking about an intervener. There's only one because one intervener handles 90% of all of the, uh, all of the requests that come through. It handles 90%. It collects the millions of dollars in fees. And they're actually pointing out right here that those fees have to be paid for by, guess who? The insurance carriers, which, okay, so the insurance carriers have to pay for the people that are trying to slow down the process, in essence. Okay, that's always been the case. And guess what? That's unchanged as well. Why are they mentioning this? I don't know. Side note, those increases of those costs that the insurance carriers are paying the interveners to fight against them, in essence, just gets passed down in, in rates that we pay as consumers. So not, not really liking that, but that's the law and that's the way it's been. And that's not going to change, right? So again, 
we're looking at a situation where we have regulations coming that are going to, by every account, expedite the process of insurance carriers being able to offer products, new products, old products, new rates, lower rates, new discounts, other discounts throughout California. Not seeing anything bad in any of this. Of course, we can always make the argument, but it could be bad. And that's basically what they continue to say. It could be bad. It could go sideways. This could be a problem. I uh, I, I don't know. Uh, it's, it's, it's bizarre. And here's another quote for you from the same organization. It says, quote, mandating non-disclosure agreements to meet the confidentiality demands of private black box modelers will prevent regulators and independent public interest groups from testing models accuracy and from sharing their analysis with the public. Well, if an insurance carrier has a proprietary system and the law says, sorry, you got to show us, and the Department of Insurance says, of course, we will sign a a non-disclosure. We're going to sign an NDA. We're not going to share your proprietary data with your competitors. How is that a problem? I could see the independent carriers saying, we don't want to share our private stuff with you that we spend all this money developing, period. The fact that they're going to be forced to do it is good for consumers. And so their complaint, this group, is that they have to sign a non-disclosure agreement. So what? Department of Insurance doesn't care. Let's talk about this a little bit more after this quick break. I'm sure many small business owners out there have been hearing a lot about tax advisory, but aren't quite sure what it is or how it can help. Let Semaphore guide you and help fulfill your tax advisory needs at SemaphoreHQ.com. A tax advisor is a part-time, on-demand financial expert who can help you with scaling and tracking your financials and making smart financial decisions. How do you know if you need tax advisory? The answer depends on your stage, size, and goals. Tax advisory can help you address these issues without the cost or commitment of hiring a full-time CFO. A tax advisor can work with you on a project basis, a retainer basis, or a hybrid basis, depending on your needs and budget. If you are interested in learning more about how tax advisory can help you scale your business, please contact Semaphore today at 720-766-8869 or check us out at semaphorehq.com. That's S-E-M-A-P-H-O-R-E-H-Q.com. Hello, hello. I am back. This is Carl Sussman, and you are tuned in to Insurance Hour. Thank you so much for being here. Remember, if you have questions, you can reach me at 559-656-0317 or send your questions to questions at insurancehour.com. Before the break, we were talking about some nonsense. Uh, I don't know what else to call it. Um, that a certain air quote consumer group is trying to spew about problems with the new regulations that the Department of Insurance and the governor's office are trying to put through. Now, I need to pause because so far, we've already passed what's in the trailer bill. The trailer bill is simply about expediting the process. It keeps all consumer protections in place. It changes zero. Why is there any outrage about that? The existing laws are being upheld. They're being strengthened. They're simply being modernized to be done faster. Why is that bad? How is it that having a complete application is in some way worse than having an incomplete application? Why is it a bad thing if it takes 120 days maximum to get an answer? (laughs) Mind you, not a guarantee, not a promise, not a rubber stamp, an answer to your request from the Department of Insurance. How is that a bad thing? Why is it better to have it take a year or two or never? Why is that better? I I don't even see where the argument is. I'm going to move on to another part of the sustainable insurance strategy. And again, this same group is complaining about, and we had mentioned this before the break, having to do with catastrophe modeling. And here's the quote, and then I'll explain it to you. It says, quote, catastrophe models will simply be tools for insurance companies to charge more unless Commissioner Lada agrees to public scrutiny into how models impact prices requires review and approval of their design and use and requires that insurance companies use them to provide consumers and communities with actionable information. Okay, Um, again, this is up to the insurance commissioner. The insurance commissioner will do what they deem correct. Ironically, this same group that is complaining about the potential uh, modeling that's being used 
is the same group that actually created the insurance commissioner as an elected position. Previously, the insurance commissioner was appointed by the state governor. So as consumers, uh, we didn't have a lot of say in who the insurance commissioner was. Proposition 103 changed that and made the insurance commissioner an elected position. So the Proposition 103 creates an elected official. And then Proposition 103 backers and folks that created it are now complaining that the person that we might elect to put there isn't doing it the way they might want, therefore it's all bad. You see the flaw in the logic there? You can't create a position and say, this is the right position, but if the person in that position might, mind you, it hasn't happened, might not do it the way you like, therefore everything is bad. It's ridiculous. I mean, there's zero logic to this at all. It's it's just beyond frustrating for me. Uh, what else do I have here quote wise that I wanted to read to you? And then I'll get to the very, the very interesting part for sure. Uh, another quote or two, just because, you know, I haven't been able to make the point to you yet. Then hopefully this will, uh, this will do it just to give you an idea. Um, let me give you some quotes from the folks other than the, the complaining group. One, uh, here is one. It says that, um, By enacting this important part of our strategy, the legislature can help us meet the urgency of the moment. This is from uh, Ricardo Lara after the trailer bill announcement was made. Gavin Newsom, obviously, the one that is coming out with this trailer bill, strongly behind this. And like I said earlier today, he came out strong. He came out swinging during the budget conference when it was brought up and said, hey, we cannot wait. We need to get things fixed now. And I have this resounding thought that keeps going through my mind. Yeah, look where we are right now. Every day, consumers are getting non-renewed by the tens of thousands. Every day, consumers are unable to get insurance policies that they should and want to get. We need to do something right now. Now, there are people, obviously, that are understanding what's going on, and those people, rightly so, are on board with all of it. For example, Senator Susan Rubio said she supports the bill. She said, quote, I could be, I could not be more pleased with the governor's proposal to help reduce unnecessary red tape. Yeah, who could be against that? Well, this miscellaneous group. And I think it's time that we pull back the curtain on this on this group, okay? The group that we're talking about, uh, and I will still leave them nameless, but you can do the research if you're interested, are, are the folks that actually created Proposition 103. And what's interesting about the creation of Proposition 103 is it actually had provisions to keep the founders, the people that created it, relevant. So I look at this whole argument at this point as reality versus relevancy. The reality is the laws are being improved and the parts that protect consumers are being reinforced. The relevance is this consumer group, period, because they don't really have a function anymore. They're not needed anymore. They haven't been for quite some time, arguably. So instead, they're just throwing out a lot of information to try and stay relevant, to try and stay involved in the conversation in general. And just some information, some facts about this particular group. Uh, It's a consumer group, air quote, air quote, and it has zero members. It's basically a tightly held organization. It has made tens of millions of dollars since the introduction of Proposition 103 in fees that it's charged that insurance carriers have paid and they very nicely passed on down to consumers. In the last five years, 90% of all intervener fees went to this organization. In 20 and 2021 alone, they racked in over 2 million. And the founder of the organization in 2021 was paid $450,000 in consulting fees. Does this sound like a consumer focused organization to you or does it sound like an organization that exists for the sake of itself? Remember, if it's big claim to fame is they're an intervener, anybody can be an intervener. You could be an intervener. I could be an intervener. Anybody can. 
the fact that they hold on to 90% of all the interventions that go along and are making this money on it, add that to the fact that they're spewing blatant lies, as I pointed out earlier, and then just some irrelevant information, you can decide for yourself. Do you think that that makes a lot of sense? Do you think this is a consumer group or do you think this is a group that's trying to stay relevant? Is the reality of what's going on going to outweigh their desire to stay relevant or not? I want to talk a little bit more about the organization and things that we can do to try and move ourselves forward in this industry. We'll talk about that right after the break. We all love children, and many of us have an old car, truck, or van in the driveway. Find the Children has a great way for you to put your unwanted vehicle to good use. Keep listening. Every year, thousands of kids go missing. Trust me, it's a parent's worst nightmare. When a child goes missing, every moment counts, and you need all of the help you can get. Find the Children is a nonprofit organization dedicated to locating missing children and bringing them home safely. You can help support their mission by donating your car, truck, van, or SUV. A towing company will come and pick up your car for free, running or not, and the donation of your car is tax deductible. Your help is providing the funds they need to continue their services. Call now, donate your old vehicle to find the children and get free pickup. Here's the number. 800-403-6517. 800-403-6517. 800-403-6517. That's 800-403-6517. Master the California insurance marketplace with Sussman Insurance Agency. Two generations of insight make us your ideal ally. Call 877-411-5200 or visit sussmaninsurance.com for information on your insurance policies now. Hello, hello, Carl Sussman here. You are tuned into Insurance Hour. Thank you so much for being here. Once again, remember you can reach me anytime at 559-656-0317 or email questions at insurancehour.com. You can find us on great radio stations all across California. We're reaching over 30 million folks at this point. You can also reach a replay of the show on YouTube or on Apple Podcasts. If you look up Insurance Hour pretty much anywhere, you're going to find us. Now, before the break, we were talking a little bit about this organization relevance versus reality. I thought maybe I would give you some more facts that might be of interest to you. Uh, A fact is that between 2012 and 2022, California insurance companies paid out more than 1.13, I'm sorry, let me try this again. Insurance carriers paid $1.13 for every dollar they received in premium. Yeah, let that sink in for a second. For every dollar they collected, they paid a dollar thirteen. Doesn't take a lot of math to realize that they're losing money. That's not sustainable. Are there years that on average are better? Sure. But when you average out that period of time, it's more than a 10% loss. I'm not bleeding, crying the blues for the insurance carriers. I'm not. I'm just trying to point out the fact that These are private companies that are losing money. That's the reason that we don't have a robust insurance competitive marketplace in California. The numbers show it, period, right? Something else. In California, it is the only state in the country that does not use catastrophe modeling to calculate risks. Catastrophe modeling, by the way, is just a fancy way of saying that they use computers and data and all of this big data that we've accumulated over the years to predict what's going to happen. Instead, the insurance market has to just look backwards 10 years. Well, the future, if you had to guess right now, are we going to see a future that looks more like 10 years ago or more like something completely different? you're probably going to be with me and say, I think things are going to look a lot different in the next 10 years than they were in the previous 10 years. Well, current regulations do not allow California insurance companies to take that under consideration. Not a very good thing, if you ask me. The insurance industry apparently agrees because, again, that's part of what they're losing money based on. They're having to deal with regulations and guidelines based on the past versus the future. Something else to be aware of, uh, again, The intervener process, right? This is the process where an insurance carrier wants to make a change to a policy. It goes to the Department of Insurance 
and then some entity or some person decides that they don't like it for some reason. That process has existed since 1988 and will continue to exist. Also understand that it costs money and that money has to be paid for by the different insurance carriers and it is passed down with premiums. We pay for it, right? You got to pay the piper somewhere. Someone's got to pay for it. And unfortunately, right now, we're the ones that are paying for it. Another point to keep in mind, and again, I'm not trying to flood you with numbers and data because I really want you to have a more global idea of what it is that's going on. As, as a matter of fact, I want to just step back from all the data and facts and really just try and, 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 and talk, be real with you here for a minute, okay? This is not about the big, bad, evil insurance companies. This is not about the big, bad, evil in intervener comp organizations. This is not about the big, bad anybody. This is about what do we need to do to fix the situation in California so that we can buy homeowners insurance again. That's what we're talking about. And right now, we can't do that. We just can't do that. If you pick up the phone and call 10 places to get a quote for homeowners insurance, nine of them will probably just say no. The 10th one might say, we'll think about it and may or may not give you a quote. That's a far cry from the hundreds of carriers that used to write insurance in California. Remember, an insurance carrier makes money by selling insurance to consumers. If they are refusing to sell money, I'm sorry, to sell policies to consumers, they're not making money. That's their business model. Sell insurance, make money. If they're not selling insurance, they're not making money. Why else would they not be selling insurance other than the fact that they're not able to make money? These guidelines that are being discussed, the sustainable insurance strategy that Ricardo Lara is putting forward, are going to update regulations in California. It's going to update the guidelines that will permit the carriers to do the things that enable them to compete and enable them to re-enter the market. You've probably heard this before. You know, California is the fifth largest economy on the planet. Huge, huge. You, it, it's mind boggling when you actually stop and think about it that way. This is a place that industry wants to be. This is a place where the insurance industry wants to be. There's a lot of money to be able to be made here. California also has its challenges. Hey, I'm born and raised in California. Been here my whole life. I love it here. I think it's the best place to be. But let me tell you something, the rest of the country, they're having the same problems that we're having right now when it comes to dealing with the insurance crisis and dealing with the fact that carriers are trying to find a way to properly underwrite and price risk. This is not a California only problem. We're talking about it as it pertains to California because the crisis is the biggest here. It's the most imminent and in true California style, we're the first ones to take it on and fix it. The rest of the country is also going to be taking on these challenges and they are slowly starting to do so. Do you know that right now, I talked to a home office for a large uh, international insurance carrier not long ago, and they told me that out of 50 states, 45 out of the 50 states currently have restrictions or capacity issues on writing property insurance. Think about that. Let's just say that's basically everybody because the five states are probably states that have a population the size of my pinky, uh, respectfully. So this is not a California-only problem. This is an industry problem that is being dealt with. And how it's dealt with is going to depend a lot on how the regulators and the legislators and the people that are consumers that get involved try and find solutions to a problem. Remember, we are not trying to be bullies as consumers and force carriers to do things. I don't think, because they don't have to, they're private. These legislators are trying to find a way to enable the insurance industry to enter California again, become profitable. Remember, Proposition 103 has a definition of profitable, not excessive, but adequate. Words to that effect, remember I read that earlier? That stays the same. We just want to get back to that place. And the best way to get back to that place right now is to follow what, I say the big brains, follow what the governor's office is telling us to do. Follow what the Department of Insurance has put together the plans to try and get the industry jump started again. These are things that we can do to try and get industry working again. Let me rub that all up with a bow for you when we come back from the break. 
I'm Carl Sussman. This is Insurance Hour. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, in just a few moments, the window to the magic podcast show will begin. My name is Patrick. My name is Calvin. I'm Mouseketeer Gray. My name is Paul, and I will be your guide through the wonderful world of Disney sound experiences. This show is a weekly trip into the world of the Disney theme parks and resorts. And this is the place where you get to use your ears to surround yourself with the magic. For your safety, please remain seated while listening to the Window to the Magic.com podcast. Maybe there's a name for this. Something like Disnotic Obsession. Please visit windowtothemagic.com for more information, or you can find us on Apple Podcasts and in the iHeartMedia app. Hello, hello, and welcome back. I am Carl Sussman, and you are tuned into Insurance Hour. Remember, if you missed any part of this show, just jump online, type Insurance Hour, look around. You will find a copy of the show. You'll find it on Apple Podcasts. You'll find it on YouTube. You'll find it all over the place. You can, you can always find it. We try and make it as easy as possible. Of course, we're also syndicated all across California with great radio stations. 30 million or so listeners are at, at last count. Thank you so much for your support. And I, I hope that I can continue to provide you with valuable information to help you navigate these crazy insurance times. Now, as we finish this final segment of the show, I, I need to try and take a step back because I know that this has been one of the more emotionally driven shows for me, at least. Maybe you can't tell, but this is really something that gets under my skin. I get frustrated when I have to deal with people that are not dealing in reality and they're not dealing with facts. And I'm going to give you one last resounding example. This organization, once again, that I have still allowed to remain anonymous by name, claims to have saved Californians billions and billions of dollars since the enactment of Proposition 103. And people take that as gospel. They say, oh, okay, yes, good, that's great. That must be a good thing. But there's no way to make that claim. There's no way to make that claim. How do we know what would have happened if Proposition 103 had not passed? How do we know what carriers would have done if they weren't tied down to certain guidelines that Proposition 103 had? How do we know what new carriers may have entered the market? How do we know what a competitive marketplace would have actually done in California? For them to claim that they've saved California billions of dollars, I'd be like, okay, show me the parallel universe you're using as a, as a uh, control group. Show, show me where that is because I'm not aware of one. There is no way to know. There is no way to know. This would be akin to doing this. Coming out with a new antibiotic, giving it to people, and if they get better, saying, hey, the antibiotic works. Well, that's not how it works. The scientific method tells us we have to have a control group. We give some people the medicine, some people we don't. And hopefully the people that take the medicine are getting better. For someone to claim that Proposition 103 has saved Californians billions of dollars is simply a foul, is, is a foul, you see, I'm getting all tongue-tied, I'm so upset. You can't say that. It's a false conclusion because you can't just take a conclusion and say, and work backwards from the premise. You can't say that the law passed and therefore we've saved all of this money because we have no way of knowing what the prices would have been. We have no way of knowing what the industry would have been like. We would have had no idea. I'll just throw another random example out there. One of the parts of Proposition 103, and we've talked about property insurance. Let me just take a quick spin on auto insurance. Proposition 103 defines what a good driver is. And based on Proposition 103, how would you like to know that here are what two people would be considered a good driver? Let's call me a good driver. I've never had a ticket or accident in the last five years, let's say. You, you have 16 tickets, four accidents, and maybe two at fault, two at fault with bodily injury, maybe an involuntary manslaughter accident, all this stuff. But after three years, you and I are both good drivers by definition. That's part of, that's part of Prop, Proposition 103, folks. Would it be fair for me to say Proposition 103 is responsible for bad driving habits from Californians because they know they get a free pass after 36 months? 
I guess. But I can't prove that. I can't say it's for sure the case because I have no control group. I have no way of knowing. Do you see how it works? You're not able to draw a conclusion without a control group in this situation. So if you take nothing away from this, take two things away from today's show. Number one, when you hear people talking about how horrible these regulations are and how it's going to cost more money and it's going to make people pay more, stop and say to yourself, Right now, we have no insurance marketplace in California. These guidelines are going to create an environment where the industry is going to be able to come back aggressively and compete. One of them has already said so straight out. They said, once these regulations are in place, we're writing, I think the quote is something to the effect of in every corner of the state the next day. So we know this is going to work. We know it's going to bring back competition. So when you hear people talking about how bad it is, give yourself a moment to stop and remember that All of the things that are being done are to generate competition. And you know what competition does. Keep that in mind. And the other thing to please remember and keep in mind, when you're hearing the talking heads and you're hearing this particular group keep talking about how much money they've saved Californians, ask yourself this simple question. Uh, How do they know? Where's the control group? How do we know that this is in fact what would have happened had we not had Proposition 103 passed? How do we know any of these things for a fact that we can even not only claim to have saved money, but put a dollar amount on it? It's actually pretty arrogant when you think about it. To be able to say that because of something that was done in 1988, we're going to be able to forecast over all that time exactly to the dollar how much money was saved, as if we could possibly have any way of knowing what prices would have been during that time without the regulation in place, without that proposition? Come on, come on. I mean, you don't have to be a rocket scientist to realize that that's just nonsense, but it's become part of our public psyche. We just hear that, oh, Proposition 103 saved everyone all this money. Maybe, maybe not. Who knows? There's no control group. But what we do know is Proposition 103 has put us in a position that we're in today. It put our insurance industry in the position that it's in today. And I ask everyone, how's that working out for us? Probably going to say not doing so well. Not exactly where we want to be. We have seen more carriers leave. We have seen more people be be non-renewed. We've seen less availability than we have seen in the history of the California insurance market. So I would say to you, keep in mind when you're hearing all of these things that In essence, where we are right now happened on Proposition 103's watch, right? It's a fact. That's not a talking point. That's just a fact. And when you hear people talking about the big bad insurance commissioner and the big bad governor and the big bad insurance companies, take a breath and pause and remind yourself, these are elected officials. We put them there. And number two, these are private companies. If you own stock in an insurance company, would you want them doing business in a state where they're losing money? Or would you say, "Uh, no, no, thank you. You have to stop writing there, please. I'm a shareholder. I don't want you there if you're losing money. Of course you would. You can't lose money indefinitely. It's not sustainable, which is probably why Ricardo Lara's name for his new plans are the sustainable insurance strategy. So with that, I'm going to wrap up today. I appreciate you listening to me rant. Please, please, if you disagree or you have information or feedback for me, let me know. 559-656-0317 and questions at insurancehour.com. I'm Carl Sussman, and I will talk to you again soon. I do want to thank all of you for taking the time to listen today. I know insurance is not necessarily the most sexy concept. It's not the most exciting thing in the world. It is important that you understand what it is you're getting, what you should be looking for, red flags, you name it. You just need to know more than you used to. Things are more complicated than they used to be. If you have any questions, please reach out to me directly. You can email your questions to questions at insurancehour.com or call and leave a voicemail at 559 656-0317. Educating and entertaining Californians one insurance policy at a time. This is Insurance Hour. This show is dedicated to Shamrock Papa.